Okay guys, so today I'm going to talk about dynamic data in Bricks from a newbie's perspective. Uh, a lot of people are moving to Bricks from builders like Elementor, Divi, etc. Uh, who have not had the freedom of dynamic data for and Bricks is exceptional at it. The way that Bricks handles dynamic data is exceptional. It just makes so many things possible that if you understand the basics of dynamic data, you will be amazed at what you can do that you just could never do before unless you added additional plugins for your theme builder, etc. Uh, but built into Bricks has the capabilities to do whatever you want to do with dynamic data. So if you do a very quick search for Bricks Dynamics Data, the first thing you'll find in Google is this page here on Bricks Academy. It has a really good explanation here from Thomas, a bunch of examples. Uh, there's some built-in uh, dynamic tokens. So what they call a token is when you've got these curly braces and a keyword in the middle. And basically what happens is Bricks will replace that. So it's like a placeholder with whatever the value of that um, returns. So in this case, it's going to return the title of the post. In this case, it's going to turn the URL linking to the post, all that sort of stuff here. Uh, you've got filters on here, so you can actually put a colon after that. And this is all documented through here. Link, and that'll turn your post title into an actual link to the post with all the correct ARIA attributes, everything. You don't have to do anything else. There's all sorts of additional things that you can do here that I'm not going to go through. Uh, but just read through this. There's a lot of golden little gems in there. If you're trying to figure out how to output some information, have a look at this page first. Okay, so it's got all sorts of dates, query fields, uh, site details, so your WordPress. Uh, site title, site tagline, these are WordPress functions that are calling that and returning those values. Uh, they're all ready to go. Uh, user fields, uh, da -da -da, custom fields, native. I don't know anyone who's using still using WordPress custom fields, but it has support for that if you want it. Uh, and then we've got this advanced echo, which we're going to cover last, where you can use echo, any function you like. That could be a WordPress function, a PHP function, your own custom function, calling a function from a plugin, doesn't matter what it is, you can echo that out. There is a caveat, which they talk about here, the security enhancement that was done recently in Bricks, and uh, you need to be aware of this, which I'll show you at the end, to be able to use this echo with the new functions. All right, so heading over to Bricks itself, uh, one of the things that I typically do in the settings for Bricks is in the builder, so zoomed in here so people with small screens can see this. I normally enable this render dynamic data on Canvas. And that is so that you can see what the actual values are on the editor rather than just the tokens themselves. So let's stop talking about it and actually do something. Uh, actually, sorry, Game Maker Step. I've used Metabox and I've created a basic uh, set of custom fields for an options page. Uh, and I'll just put some global options here. So I've got a URL, alt tag, animation class, and an attribution. I've got global options. I've just put some values in here. So I've got a URL to an image. I've got some text for my alt, uh, an animation class, and an attribution string here. So this is just so we can test it. Uh, this could be from global options that are using dynamic data. It could be from a custom post type, from meta that you've added to uh, posts, pages, taxonomies, doesn't matter what it is, dynamic data is dynamic data. This is just an example to show you how it works. So we go to pages, go to my test page. Okay, I'm going to create a new section. In that section, I'm just going to add a rich text box. And we're going to add some stuff in here. I'm just going to make, make that your URL, uh, alt, uh, attribution and what else we're going to have would we have a class okay so for URL I'm just going to use my dynamic tag token up here metabox type of actions that's my image URL alt it's the same thing it's my alt attribution and my class Okay, so we can see that there. Now, while you're editing, you see the actual tokens. 
when you click away from that, you should see the actual values. Funny thing here, Bricks is doing this weirdly. Sometimes it's not adding the paragraphs here, but it will actually show in the front end. So if we look at that in the front end, it actually works. So we're actually getting our dynamic value for our URL, alt, attribution, and class. So you can see the dynamic tags are working already. So now we're going to add an actual image. On that image, I'm just going to select dynamic data, test URL. Uh, you can do this because that's using an external source, not using WordPress. This makes no difference here, the size. Uh, this never used to work in WordPress. It used to work in the editor, but not the front end. But now, for some reason, they've changed that. But you can actually just copy that out of there. So I'm going to cut that out of there, put in the external URL, because the external URL doesn't have the dynamic um, button. Uh, so it doesn't mean if it doesn't have the dynamic button, it doesn't mean dynamic tags don't work. It just doesn't have the UI to access it. So you just type it in there or copy and paste it in there and it works. So wherever you put these, it'll render the value of those. Okay, we're going to set our, our image tag to be a figure so we can add a related caption to it. We're going to set our alt text here. Test alt. We're going to turn on our captions. We're going to set that to custom. And we're going to do a test. Uh, da, 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 attribution. Okay, and then what we're going to do is link to this image by using other URL, dynamic data, test image URL. Okay, we're just going to save that and have a look at that on the front end. So now what do we have? We have an image that's linkable with a caption, all from dynamic data. If we look at the actual image, there's our, there's our figure there. What it does with bricks, it actually puts the attributes onto the image, which is where it needs to be. And that's automatically done for you, which creates some confusion when you're looking at attributes. So one thing we haven't done is added our animation class and this would be something you would do manually. So let's go to our style. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Actually, let's have a look at the class, the CSS first. Uh, sorry, the uh, editor here. So what we'll see is on our image, we've got a class of CSS filter and size large. If we override that, we're going to lose those options. So there could be other things on there. So if we just go into the attributes and set our class to the dynamic tag of the test image class. Save that. What we'll see is that our image no longer has the default classes. It's just got this fade in class from our dynamic data, which we don't want because we want to retain our original classes. So what we do here is change that to a data attribute. So we change that to a data attribute, and then we'll see here, we now have our standard CSS, but we've also got this data animation class attribute here, which is a fade in. So I'm going to grab that there, and show you how you target that. I'm going to grab that whole name, go back to Bricks here, go to my CSS tab, I'm going to go Roots. We need a space here because when the root we're looking at the figure, but the image where it's applying this to is underneath that. So we're going to put square brackets because we're in CSS, you use square brackets to target an attribute. We're going to target an attribute of data animation class when it's got the fade in. And then you'd set up some animation here. It could be keyframe animations, whatever you want. I'm just going to set the opacity so we can see it to 0.3. Save. Let's see what that does on the front end. Here we go. It didn't update in the editor. It may do when we refresh the editor. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So that actually worked to uh, put the opacity of our image to 0 0.3. Typically, you'd actually have some keyframe animations here. I might just save and reload and see what that does. Because quite often that does work. There we go. Now it's working in the editor as well. So there are some quirks. All right, so that's the basic dynamic data.
um, and how you'd use those dynamic tokens to render that data as basically text elements or as attributes um, in the UI or as uh, attributes in your uh, attributes here, actual attributes. So the next one is the echo. Let's go back to our rich text. And we're going to go in here and we're going to add another line there. We're going to call it echo. And let the, let's go back to here. And what do we have for the echo? Echo, get the date. Let's just grab that. Put the whole thing in there. Now I know there's a fault with this. There's a problem with this. So I'm going to just get rid of that formatting. There's a problem with that not rendering properly. Okay. What we're going to see here is I've added an echo and then I've added a dynamic token calling the WordPress function get the date. Okay, now if we don't send any parameters, we can actually get rid of the parentheses there as well. Let's say and what we'll see is that it doesn't work. We get echo, but then nothing. This is a security thing that Bricks talks about up here, where you now have to whitelist anything that you want to echo out that is not already whitelisted in Bricks. So to do that, what we have to do is go to Bricks, Settings, go to the custom code, do a card review, and it'll tell us that it's found in a net rich text element, it's found echo of get the date, and it's created this PHP filter here to whitelist get the date. So every time you add an echo function, you need to do a code review, you need to copy this and paste it somewhere into your code. Normally your child theme uh, functions.php. So I'm going to copy that. And you can go through appearance, theme file editor, go into your custom themes, make sure it's on your child theme, on the Bricks child theme here. And you would paste that into here and then save. Now, unfortunately, I'm running this on uh, local. And for some reason, if I hit the save on there or update the file, it messes up. The whole thing just crashes. So I'm just going to reload that. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to go back to local here. I'm just going to open up that site in VS Code. There it is there. I'm going to paste it into there and save that. All right, now if I go back to my theme editor, have a look in there, I've got it in there. So I just had to do that differently than what you would normally do because this will crash my little local web server when I do that for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. All right, so now we've whitelisted to get the date. If we go back to this page now and refresh. We now have the date of this post page, whatever. All right. So all the stuff up here, the dynamic tokens, because they're automat automatically whitelisted by Bricks, you just use them. Anything that's custom, so any PHP or WordPress or custom function uh, that you create, you have to whitelist in, a, in order to use that. All right, so that is the basics of using dynamic data tokens in Bricks. Uh, there's a lot more to it when you start getting into integrations with things like Metabox and ACF and repeaters and all this sort of stuff uh, and query loops and, you know, uh, accessing, you know, uh, you know, nested query loops and things like that. There's more to it, but this is the basics. And with this, you can do so much more than you can do in other page builders that do not have this dynamic data capability. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that and hopefully that adds some value and you can actually start to use this in your bricks building. Thanks for listening.